this is the Provoke Prawn, and I've been having some problems with a PC that I crafted recently that I want to show you. When I started testing for thermal performance with OCCT, I found I got thousands of errors on the CPU, and that it was getting very hot, and blue screening and crashing as well. Not ideal. So I want to show you some of the things of interest about this build, and how I've handled these problems, and the things that I've discovered that might be interesting to you. They might help, hopefully, if you're having issues too. So for this build, I'm using a Ryzen 7700X, which is an older CPU, but one that I happen to have to hand. So I thought it'd be a valid use for building in here and testing with. It's been used a few times, it's worth noting, but this Deep Cool Mystique ARGB cooler that I've got here is brand new. And I don't think the cooler is the problem, despite the fact that it's a black cooler in a white case with white fans, which obviously doesn't look ideal. But I am planning on testing and reviewing both the case and the cooler. So I wanted to do some stress testing and thermal performance testing to see how the system got on. And I ran Cinebench and OCCT and 3D Mark. Now the temperatures were quite high in Cinebench and in 3D Mark, but it's to be expected with the synthetic benchmarks that are pushing it quite hard. As you can see, the cooler also gives you a readout of the temperatures. And it was in the high 80s, low 90s in a lot of tests. But because of the crashes with OCCT, I decided the first thing I was going to do was update the BIOS. As you can see, I'm on version 0806 in this instance. So I went to update to the latest BIOS version available for this motherboard, which is 1022, which is a number of BIOS versions newer than the original one. And then running the tests with Cinebench and other things, I still saw I was getting pretty hot temperatures. But more importantly, it was still blue screening when using OCCT, which is a bigger indicator of problems and the fact that it was showing so many errors with the CPU. So my next chain of thought is maybe I damaged the pins on the motherboard when installing the CPU. If you manage to bend the pins when installing your CPU, this can lead to pretty significant problems like this or maybe other ones like random crashes and weird things like that. So I took off the cooler, cleaned it up, got off rid of the thermal paste so I can rejuvenate that and also off the CPU itself. And then I went to get a close look at the socket of the motherboard to see if I'd done any damage because obviously damage in the motherboard pins is a big problem and not an ideal one because it wouldn't be easy to sort out and fix yourself. But this was my thinking, maybe this was the issue because Windows is up to date, the BIOS has been updated and yet I was still having issues. This is an older CPU, as I said, it's been used in a few different builds. And I noticed on the underside, there's some marks on the right hand side here on the contacts. So maybe it's damaged or dirty. The good news is, though, looking at the pins on the motherboard from multiple angles, I couldn't see any bent pins here. It looks fine. So I don't think I managed to do any damage to the motherboard itself. But what I'm going to do instead is to take a CPU from the Be Quiet case that I recently built. So the 9800X3D is going to come out of this build, which I was hoping to keep in there for a while, to be frank. But I'm going to have to go reuse what I've got. So I'm going to take this CPU out and put it into this new system and see if it was the CPU that was causing the problems. Obviously, you have to be careful during this process when doing this as well. I'd recommend putting the plastic cap back on if you are going to do such a thing and be careful with those pins. Keep them covered over and protected when not in use. Obviously not everybody has a spare CPU available to be able to do this, I'm aware of that, and I'm lucky but I have bought both of these CPUs. But I would recommend perhaps having a look at your pins if you have noticed issues, or also thinking about cleaning up your thermal paste if your CPU's been in the system a while, you notice your temperatures are pretty hot, maybe it's the thermal paste that's an issue. I've got a video separately on thermal throttling and other things to think about. But here I'm using a brand new set of the thermal paste. So this is ROG thermal paste from Zeus. And I'm also using a the thermal guard from Noctua as well around the AM5 CPU here. And obviously I'm going to try the 9800X3D in this setup instead to see if the stability problems that I was having is caused by something else or if it was the CPU. New thermal paste, deep cool cooler back on, setting it back up, plugging everything back in the way it was before and then run the tests again and see how we got on with it. Now it's worth noting that there are just three intake fans in here, got three reverse blade fans on the side, but immediately OCCT worked and after an hour of testing it was still going. The system didn't crash, the temperatures were much more reasonable. You can see here it was at 64 degrees initially, later on we're looking at 75 degrees-ish at the sort of maximum end 
of what the temperatures got up to. So not terrible. And also running the other tests around Cinebench and other 3D Mark tests and didn't see any problems with it. So it looks like the CPU was maybe the problem in this instance. So that's a relief and certainly a good indicator that I've fixed the problem. So the thought process here is to give you a few different takeaways to consider in your build. If you've just done a new PC build, I recommend testing it with a few different things. OCTT and Cinebench are both free to use, so I recommend using those and a Hardware Info 64 to have a look at the temperatures and see how that's going. If you see any red temps in Hardware Info, that can be an indicator of problems. And obviously if it's blue screen and crashing as soon as you've installed your system and you're running those basic tests, that's probably an indicator. More long term... I'd recommend considering looking at your thermal paste, seeing if it's maybe dried out over time. After a year or more, thermal paste can dry out. Replenishing it, cleaning it up, and replacing it with a newer thermal paste can help keep the temperatures down. Also, the other thing to think about is thermal throttling in your system anyway. I've done a separate video on this that I'll link to in the description. But as you'll see, that case has only got three intake fans on it currently. There's no fans on the bottom. I'm going to do a future look at this case obviously with the review of it i'm also going to build in it again and try and put some extra fans at the bottom see what difference that makes to temperatures but maybe if you've got a case with not great airflow it could be that it was getting too hot it is possible that maybe that 7700x cpu was just running too hot it was drawing too much power getting too hot but i don't think so because it worked fine with cinebench it worked fine with 3d mark it was only with occt that i started to see the problems with the errors being reported by OCCT on the CPU, and then it started to blue screen and crash. So I don't think it was overheating in the other instances, but it was pretty toasty. Can sometimes also be really simple things, like maybe the cooler's just not tightened up quite enough. If it's a little bit loose and isn't making good contact, that can cause problems with the CPU overheating as well. So just watch out for that. It can be simple things like that. Obviously, troubleshooting to the point of being able to just swap the CPU out isn't easy for everybody. But I maybe wanted to give you a few different hints on the things that you can do to test your system. And also just to show you the effort that I'm putting into what I'm doing at the moment. So subscribe if you haven't already to see the build of that PC behind me, which is a dark flash case that I'll leave the specs of in the description. I'm going to do a build guide review and more on that soon. And obviously come back to see the deep cool review as well. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.